it's raining again feels like fall or spring i don't know but it's raining every day anyways we have packages we have parts and we have a good used exhaust for our 1972-73-71 TR6 so hi guys welcome to the next episode of our TR6 overhauling whatever we want to call it and you know we already dealt with the wiring on this car we worked a little bit on the suspension we fixed some of the issues that we could we ordered some parts for the rest, uh, the rear axles, the owner is already sourcing new ones or he's going to rebuild his, we'll see what, uh, he, like he's going to deal with that, so we're not going to touch them for now. What's left here is some engine work. So I already have the carburetors out here and I'm taking out the manifolds because we had an exhaust leak from this gasket here. So I'm taking it out and uh, i'm gonna also start stripping a little bit here in the front as well because we need to change also the water pump it is in the boxes so what i'm doing right now is i'm uh, draining the coolant it's almost drained anyways um, and then uh, we're gonna change all that we're gonna put new coolant after that and we're gonna go from there uh, while the carburetors are out i'm gonna take the I'm gonna take them apart a little bit, we're gonna clean them, we're gonna inspect them a little bit better. The owner brought some parts for them as well, so we're gonna service them a little bit. We're not gonna rebuild them, but we're gonna service them a little bit. And once everything is assembled, then we're gonna deal with ignition and uh, carburetors. We're gonna tune the engine properly. I'm not gonna hold you here for all the stripping and assembling and all that. I might give you a little bit of updates every once in a while. And. Uh Okay, the intake manifold is out and I just started on doing the bolts here which I soaked before on the exhaust manifold and they come out pretty easy except this one which look at this one look at the shape of it 916 doesn't fit and it looks like it's been mangled pretty well so we'll see how we're gonna take it out i hope it comes out but we're gonna have to replace it because it looks like somebody was, somebody's already been there these by the way were pretty loose all of them you can see there's anti-seize they came out really easy so i don't know looks like the gasket is not too bad but there was a leak definitely and maybe it was because they were a little bit too loose look at this here is like split i don't know we will see i'm gonna have to split it here too maybe the leak was from there we don't know so here i can see they used bolts like true bolts anyway we're gonna replace that gasket as well but i'm having trouble here so i just soaked them and i'm gonna continue to struggle here with it <laughs> okay all the studs actually came out and this nut and i found multiple issues so one of the issues is at the threads of this nut that was the weird one so it was barely holding anything we might chase the threads on this stud or replace it i don't know if we find one the other thing is these two studs these are the two one from here one from here look how short they are so this one I literally turned two, three times and it came off. So it was barely holding on any threads. And this one, same thing, super short. And look, it looks like it's snapped. So I thought that maybe I snapped it when I took it out and now I was gonna be in trouble. But look at that, look how much it was going in. It was actually holding on some threads. But if I go with the screwdriver, look how deep the hole is so there's nothing there's no snapped part inside so definitely we need two new studs for here and here and hopefully we have good threads inside the head and this this stud we have to figure out whether we can use or not because 
the threads might be done. This was pretty good at the end. So it was holding like three eighths of an inch. So that's good, but that's why it was leaking, I'm assuming. The manifold comes out so far, but I need to take out those from there. And I don't know, does it look like it was leaking from here? I don't know. We're gonna take the gasket out and we're gonna look at it um, when it's out and we'll see if we can see any signs. But for sure, that was very loose. Like I said, these were very loose underneath. Everything was loose, so surprisingly. I was preparing for a fight here. And nope, it came out without, without any fight. All right. Huh. I think we have really bad news here. Oh my God. So, is this a crack? So, so this is where the leak was coming from, but I think the problem is, oh, come on. I think the head might be cracked here. No. Oh, okay. He got scared for a second. Oof. Okay, I got scared for a second, but no, it's not a crack. But anyway, this is where the gasket was leaking from. And here, look at this. It's coming apart like... Anyway. Good. So the gasket is out, but we have a small issue as well with the ports. So, turns out this head is a narrow port, or at least it looks like. So, let me try to fit the new gasket, but I think it's not going to fit because it is the white port, what I bought. I really got scared that this was cracked, but it wasn't, so good. So, here you see the gasket. Uh, yeah, it's not like... I don't know why it snaps like that. Never seen that before. But it obviously needed changing, so I'm happy we did it. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this a little bit and we'll see if we have luck with the gasket or we're gonna need to <laughs> source another one now. So according to this guy on YouTube, we went and, and did some research, so we found this guy, Elinyakov's Rusty Beauties, and on his channel he is explaining about the port difference here. So earlier heads, I believe they had a narrower space here between the intake ports here, here, and here, and the later head have this wider uh, distance here. I believe it's around 900 tau and for the earlier heads it was 640 or something like this. Okay, so 900 for the late heads and 640 for the early heads. Now we're coming back to this discussion here about the year of this car. So if you've watched the previous episodes you know that the car was registered as 73. However, on the plate and in the door jam it says 1972. November 1972 then when we started working on the wiring harness we figured that the wiring harness and all the electrical components correspond to 70 to 71 so it is a total mix and I believe that came from the factory like that anyways now we're coming to the engine and the other day when I ordered the parts I didn't feel like doing research here on the numbers and everything I just said this car is 72, 73, whatever, so it must be the late one. However, we have 633, like 640 tau distance between the ports, and uh, the gasket that I bought is almost 900. So, we have the wrong gasket here. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna call my emergency line. Chef Tash, and we will see if he has a gasket that might match here. I'm pretty sure he might have one because his 250 was with narrow ports, and then I believe he switched to a later head. So, anyways, let me call him and we will see. If not, we're gonna have to 
order another one now. <laughs> but yeah, it comes to tell you that you can't just rely on the year of your car and order, order the parts as per the year because there's all kinds of mixes. I don't think that anybody took this head out and replaced it or something. I'm pretty sure that's how it was from the factory. Well, I asked Chef Tash and he's gonna check and he will let me know. But in the meantime, I decided to check my GT6 manifold gasket because it should be the same, I think, as a TR6. But even this one is 900 now. And that's for a 72 engine. So I even came and checked my port distance here and it is 900. So even my 72 GT6 is with wide port and this 73 TR6 is with a narrow port. It's crazy. Anyways, I'm gonna start cleaning here now, preparing it for uh, the replacement. Here, where is the gasket here? Oh, here, this gasket we're gonna replace too. Yeah, I don't think it was leaking. The leaks were from here, but yeah, let me start getting ready the head, the studs that we said. Then if we don't have a gasket, we're gonna have to order one and we're gonna start cleaning up the carburetors and taking them apart and stuff like that. And while we're here, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the valves, at least the intakes. We can see a little bit of them. Um, unfortunately, the intake, the exhaust, we can't see much. But at least we can see if there's a lot of carbon built. That's pretty high on the stem. That's actually what we see here. And what, it, what we see here actually is that the bottom of the valve guide, I don't know. But I can reach inside with my finger and touch the back of the valve and it doesn't seem to have a lot of carbon build up on the intake and on the exhaust actually. Yeah, they feel pretty good. So that's great. On a closer look actually, this doesn't seem to be snapped. I think it was left over from the anti-seize. So when I cleaned it, it's actually not snapped. So this is the so this is the whole stud for both of them, but very little part of it was into the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to remove the nuts here and put them a little bit more into the head. If I have these threads here added to the threads that went into the head, I'm gonna be okay. So yeah, we're gonna reuse them. I'm gonna clean them and try to remove the nuts from here. Okay, I ended up making new studs for here because the old ones were just, where did they go? Yeah, I started, I started cleaning the threads to undo the nuts and there's no point, no. So I made new studs and I had a boat with shorter threads. So I cut a little bit more threads on the boat and I shortened it and I cut the stud. Now, the reason why on, the, on these studs you have untreaded part is because they want you to tighten it all the way until you reach uh, the non-treaded part and it's gonna lock there and then the nut can go in. Where with these ones now, so I'm gonna have to make sure that when I'm treading them in, they go at least this much because I measured that's how much they go in. So as long as they go in here in the beginning, the threads are stripped anyways, so I have to go that far. So it's just a little bit more attention when I'm putting it in. I need to make sure that it is at least this far in and I made sure that it can go this far in. So it doesn't matter that we don't have threaded part in the middle. Also the nut is already on. So even if it stays where it is right now, the nut, which I'm sure it's not gonna, because yeah, now it hit, now it bottomed out. So now the nut is gonna start going. So we are good. So uh, we are using as much as possible on both sides of the threads anyway. So that's it for here. So I started taking apart now the, the front end here to change the pump. I noticed something though, this engine mount is ripped like 
pretty well ripped and i didn't see that before when the carbs were here i didn't see it the other side is better it's not perfect but it's better you see it still it has little little cracks but at least the two parts outer and the inner parts the metal parts of the mount are not shifted but on the other side you see this part is like three eighths or even half inch higher than the outer part which means that the engine is sagging down now so we have to change those but i didn't order them <laughs> all right it's the next day and david showed up yesterday and unfortunately he didn't have a gasket that i could use but i went into my stash and luckily i have one i don't know how but i have this one which is the narrow port so you can see here it's actually with metal lining whatever so you can see the difference here between the port so this is my tr6 gasket and the gasket that i bought for this car but it's wrong and this is the narrow port you see how much narrower this is so good we found a solution to this problem and uh, chef Tash luckily also has these engine mounts that are used but they are in a much better shape than what uh, is currently on the car so to save time so we're gonna use those anyways um i'm gonna put the water pump now i cleaned here yesterday all the surfaces i cleaned that surface so it's ready to be assembled and i'm gonna put the water pump but before we install the manifold here i'm gonna change also the engine mounts because it's gonna be easier to do it now so let me get crack -a for today yeah i know it's a mess on my table i have to clean it up a little bit anyway this is the oil pump on the water pump you can hear how noisy it is the bearing and this is the new one nice and smooth so okay let's install it all right sometimes later and the engine mounts are replaced this one was easy the other one was a little bit harder but anyway they are replace now i also installed the new water pump the new thermostat even the new temperature sender and like i said this uh, engine mount is replaced as well so now we can continue with this part here we can install the exhaust manifold first and put the new gasket there and for this gasket you have to keep in mind that there are two ways to install it the right way and the chef touch way so once he installed it like this <laughs> i prefer to install it this way but it's again a matter of choice uh yeah so i'm gonna install the new gasket here as well the exhaust manifold then we're gonna tighten these bolts and then we're gonna install the intake manifold that is there and before we install the carbs back i'm gonna open them and clean them like i said the owner sent some parts like new diaphragms and some new seals so we're gonna deal with that and then we're gonna install them back on the car all right the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold are installed the downpipe has been tightened here with the gasket in the proper orientation <laughs> and uh, now i'm gonna go to the bench and i'm gonna take a look at the carbs they are here Let's see what they need. So we gave one of the carbs a quick wash. Of course, it would be much better if we take everything apart and we put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. 
but we're not gonna go that far we're not doing total rebuild of these curbs i just wanted to clean the loose debris that's uh, that was stuck here and there because we don't want to introduce that into the carburetor inside right so we're not gonna touch the throttle bypass we're not gonna touch we're not gonna touch this uh, i think it's temperature compensator we're not gonna touch choke or any of that i mean looks like everything is working properly here but the owner gave me these o-rings that are for here because there was a leak from one of the cars he said and these are notorious for leaking so we're gonna change that uh, also o-rings for inside where the needle goes up and down you have uh, o-ring little o-ring and sometimes when this leaks all your oil from here is leaking down so we're gonna change these as well and he gave me two new needles that I don't think he needs them but I don't know we might change them as we're gonna be taking them out from the rebuild kit I don't think we're gonna use all of it even the diaphragm here looks in a pretty good shape I think from here we're only gonna use probably the gasket for the bottom because this one it's not bad but it already made marks and if we don't put it the exact same way it might leak that's why we're gonna change it and what I see here too in these kits not all of the kits include those but we have the seals for the throttle shaft and these seals are quite leaky sometimes so we're gonna take the shaft out and we're gonna change the seals here here and here silicone grease to lubricate the shaft seals okay um, other than that they give you all kinds of gasket they give you the needle for the floats but I don't think we're gonna change those they even give you these little wall rings but we're gonna keep them in the kit we're gonna use the ones that he bought separately I'll just put the seals here so there are two seals and two brass covers for them and we might need these gaskets now that we have them oops somebody's trying to sneak out <laughs> okay we're gonna change these as well and this we're gonna put back in the bag maybe we're gonna bag it in another one so nothing can escape okay so let's start with the throttle shaft we don't need to take the spring apart i'm just gonna take this out now these screws they don't recommend reusing them but we will see maybe in the kit we have new ones let's see if they send you new screws for here nope they don't give you new scr new screws so we have no choice but reusing them i'm gonna mark this so we get we put it in the same orientation and now we can pull it out and now the shaft should come out this way Well, the shaft looks like it has a little bit of a wear, but for Zenit Stromberg it's not so critical. For SUs it's cri critical because there you have brass bushings instead of seals. Here you have rubber seals, so it doesn't really matter if you have a little bit of play on the shaft. Of course it matters, but it's not such a big deal. So now let's see how we're going to take the seals out. So that's the cap and that's the seal and to be honest I've seen much worse but this one was backwards yeah looks like this one was backwards with the open part out it needs to be with the open part in oops wow you know what I mean the open part this open part needs to be in <laughs> So, anyway, hmm. looks 
like we have to take the throttle bypass anyway. Well, now that we're here, we're gonna change this gasket as well. But let's change the seal first. This one is reversed too. See, it's the wrong way. It should be this way. So somebody's been there. So the beds for the seals are cleaned. I also cleaned this gasket from here cleaned, where is it, cleaned this surface as well, so we can start assembling now. On the outside of the seal, and the inside. So this time we're going to put it the right way, which is this way. And we're gonna shove it down there. That should be good. Just to make sure that it's seated properly. Okay. So now we can put back the throttle shaft grease on it as well even though we already have grease on the seals but just in case here we have to be careful not to flip the lip of the seal right because it is okay so now that's how it is, so we're gonna go one turn to catch the spring and then one more turn and we're gonna go under, so just like this and now we can put back our throttle plate, whatever this is called We're going to use a small screwdriver to align these holes. While they're still loose, we're going to open it and close it a few times to make sure it goes in the... it closes properly because if it is not... if we twist it a little bit, it might remain open here at the bottom. I think that's how it needs to be. So this is where we're going to tighten it. And I'm going to tighten one. And I'm going to take the other one out. And I'm going to put a drop of thread lock. Hopefully it's going to keep it there. Now I'm gonna take the other one out. I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, they're not going anywhere now. And now we have to look like this inside and see how much it closes. And I think, I don't know if you can see, but it closes pretty well. Now, let's do the float. So the float has a setting here. It needs to stick out um, 16 millimeter. So. so that's quite low here. The float needs to be about 16 millimeters from this surface. All right, this is pretty tricky to measure because you can see here that the floats are not 
parallel the top of the float so if we measure here in the front this is this shows 15 but notice that at the bottom of my ruler i have some empty space not used so i measured that before and it is two and a half uh, millimeters so we see here 15 millimeters so we are about 17 and a half here the spec actually says uh, 16 17 so i think we are pretty good here so that's where i'm gonna leave it so in this case let's put the new gasket uh oh i was trying to put it backwards it has this thing here that needs to be on this side okay and now last but not least let's change this seal or the o-ring oh this one is also flexible i'm surprised usually when i take these off they snap like plastic let's see if i can squeeze a little bit more grease here for the uh, for the o-ring and this is damaged here so i'm gonna go through this side on the later strombergs you only have a cup here the opening here is because once upon a time the strombergs had adjustable jet the needle was stationary and the jet was what was going up and down when you want to adjust the air fuel ratio but then they switched them to adjustable needle the jet was now, now stationary so the hole remained there and i guess they used some old parts here to to make it seal to close this hole okay this doesn't need to be super tight because the threads are not what seals the o-ring is what seals right okay so we are done with the carb let's see what we can do with the needle and the o-ring inside on the screw so to take the needle out we have to undo this nut this uh, screw from here it's a set screw so it comes out completely there you go now we can take the needle out like this this is where the screw goes so the screw has a shoulder and it bottoms out so when it is tight it doesn't uh, push against the needle stem i don't know what this is it just butts like right close to the needle but it still allows it to travel and still can go up and down okay so here this we're gonna tap out this is the screw that adjusts the height of the needle for the air fuel ratio um, and it's a good thing we're taking it out because the owner told me that one of the carbs uh, the screw was rounded the hole that for the special tool to adjust it the screw was rounded so let's see if we can fix it and maybe i have a screw like that that i can replace it but let me tap this out first so this is the screw and that's what threads into the needle no problem so obviously it's the other uh carb that has the screw but i think i have old parts and i'm gonna find one of these so let's take this this is where the o-ring is there you go. so this one snapped it's pretty hard to take it out without snapping it even if it's new but this one is okay so now i can put back the screw i'm gonna put it like that to try and keep it flat there you go and now we're gonna put the new needle 
so we have to make sure that we orient this slot towards the hole right so the screw goes into the slot push it all the way in and as you can see here the needle still has a little bit of movement and now we have to push the needle down and with our tool we're gonna start the threads okay and now you can see here that with the tool we can raise the needle or we can bring it down so as a starters we're gonna leave it we're gonna leave it flat here with the just like that that's where we, that's our starting point and then we're gonna adjust it with the car running so this is done now we can put the whole assembly in the diaphragm has uh, a little tab and this tab goes right here there's a slot like i said this diaphragm looks good so we're not going to change it this way the owner will have his for a uh, spare okay now here there's always uh, sometimes you get confused how does this go it has a little mark here and there's a mark here as well so that's how it goes the two marks need too much we're not gonna fill it up with oil now we're gonna put oil when it is on the car and the last thing that i forgot was this part but this is pretty straightforward i'm not gonna not gonna hold you here for it i'm gonna pull out the gasket from the kit i'm gonna put it there there's three screws these three and one of them is countersink you see with the star washer that goes in this location and then here and here the same screws and that's it so i'm gonna finish this carb i'm gonna do the same for the other carb We'll, I'll see if I have another screw if that one is totally damaged and then uh, we're gonna install them on the car I'm not gonna keep you here for the second carb I'll probably see you when they are installed on the car all right so both carburetors are now assembled I changed that screw actually let me show it to you this is the screw that was stripped and it is yeah you can loosen it but you can't tighten it it's weird yeah so the hex inside the hex inside was stripped so that's garbage now but i but luckily i have two carburetors here that are <laughs> for parts only so i managed to take out the screw from here and that worked well on i also changed the gaskets here inside and outside and now i'm gonna mount the carbs and we're gonna move on all right carburetors installed and what else did i do i played a little bit with the springs here because the this lever in the middle was sitting kind of twisted and it was funny but now it operates well and uh, i added uh, this clamp here it was missing for this carburetor so that's so this choke i guess wasn't operating at all so now we have two chokes and that's it the carburetors are assembled i'm not gonna install the air cleaner box i don't know where it went uh, i'm not gonna put it yet because we're gonna tune the carbs at some point well actually it would help if i run the fuel line right <laughs> forgot about that anyways we're gonna do that so we're gonna plug this because there's vacuum leak from here this when the car was running i tried to see if there was vacuum leaking from here there wasn't i don't know why there wasn't i was gonna look at this when the car was was out and i forgot anyways we're gonna plug that as well but uh yeah so far so good we just need to add the fuel line we need to refill with uh, coolant actually i still have the hose at the bottom disconnected 
from when I drained the coolant. So now I'm gonna close it before I forget. And we're gonna seal it up with coolant and it's ready to be tuned up. However, I don't wanna tune it up here because look how it is situated. So I can always open that door, but it's gonna become a little bit smoky here. So I'm not gonna do that until I'm able to take it out, which as usual, this car is blocking me here. But anyways, I think I have a little bit more work. I have to change the bow joints and the upper control wire bushings because they were bad and now we have them. So we're gonna change this. Um, I can work tomorrow to do this on this side and maybe angle a little bit the car and do the same on the other side as it is here. And uh, what's left is to replace the muffler the owner brought me another muffler here. I think I showed it to you the other day. I don't know where it went. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's sitting out there. So we're gonna have to replace the muffler and tune up the engine. And that's everything for this car. She's almost done. Okay, so one side is rebuilt, kind of, the top end. The bushings over there are replaced and replaced the bow joint and I transferred even the grease zerk from the old one here. I drilled a hole and I made and I tapped it. Uh, turns out it's like a six millimeter thread for the grease zerk, so it's metric. <laughs> and I filled it with grease, so now it should last longer. And the other side as well, bushings and bow joint changed and grease nipple installed and greased so ready to move forward for this episode that's gonna be everything and probably there's gonna be one more episode i'm not gonna film the exhaust i guess that i can do on my own but definitely there's gonna be one more video on tuning up the engine so stay tuned for that uh, anyways that's it for today thanks for watching commenting subscribing sharing and supporting the channel thanks for joining the rusty beauties group on facebook Thanks for all the support, guys. It is appreciated. If you want to know how you can support the channel, you can go to the subscription of this video. There's links to my Patreon page. You can also do direct transfers via PayPal or e-transfer if you are in Canada. And that helps paying. And that helps me with uh, a little bit with uh, the time that I spend editing videos. Um, the Patreon, for example, um, doesn't buy you anything. You just support me for the time that I spent editing those videos and putting them out for everybody's use so everybody can learn something from my knowledge or from my mistakes as well because I also show my mistakes and uh, editing those videos takes forever so I'm not asking anybody to support me for the work that I'm doing the work that I'm doing I'm paid for I'm not paid for the hours that I spent editing I'm paid a little bit by YouTube but believe me it's not a lot so that's why I'm looking for a little bit of support for these hours that I spend on the computer editing these videos so they can be available for everyone. And uh, supporting your Patreon unfortunately doesn't buy you anything. And that's for the simple reason that everything is free already. So I can't give you anything more than that. If I want to give you something free, this means that I have to limit other people and tell them now you have to pay to get to this content because these people who pay now they get free content and if you want to get to that content as well um, you're gonna have to pay but I don't want to limit anything to anyone anybody should be able to uh, access all my content all my videos so that's why I like to say that Patreon doesn't buy you anything it the only reason why you would do it is just because you want to say Elin thank you for um, the knowledge or for the mistakes that you posted about and I learned something from something from that and, and you saved me some money. So here it is a little bit so you can buy beer. So that's the only reason why you would support me financially. Other than that, you're not gonna get any benefits. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can go and buy merchandise, for example, in the store under this video or in the description there's also a link to my store. You can go and buy mugs, t-shirts or stickers or hoodies or hats and um, then you can get something that is uh, labeled Rusty Beauty and also you're gonna help me with not a, not a lot but a little bit I get paid like two three dollars per hat or t-shirt or something like that so 
it is something. So anyways, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.